Hey, folks. Hi, villager. Did you want to join my intro as well? Well, good for you, buddy. It's good to have aspirations in your life. Welcome back to Let's Play Minecraft. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and today is a day for spring cleaning and fixing up the stuff that I broke in earlier episodes. I don't fancy going monster hunting today. Went into the nether and got a kick in the ego for it in the last episode. So we'll begin with... Well, we began with putting that little bridge outside my house. But the thing that I'm doing right now is I am refilling the craters in the desert from last night's Creeper Cavalcade. I think that I got too cocky when I was fighting them, and the game punished me by summarily destroying everything. I mean, this would be why I make a point of kiting the creepers away from anything important. Except for myself, the most important resource of all. And if I could, I'd look into the camera, give a big cheesy grin, thumbs up, little ping on my teeth when I said that. Oh, and what do you know, I guess I'm out of resources already. I guess I'm not going to be filling in these craters after all. My new policy is that that is fine. It adds character to the landscape. It's like art. It is defined by its faults. Wait, I think I'm quoting that wrong. I don't know. Basically, there is a quote that says, The things we become nostalgic for and remember the best are the things that, at the time, were problematic or stuff we hated. Like, everybody remembers the tracking bar on videotapes, or that weird grainy fuzz along the top. But that's what people are now adding to personal projects to make them look better. How on earth did I miss iron ore in this pit? Especially since it's out in the open. Oh, and what do you know? Again, I guess that guy didn't destroy anything important. Wait a second, this is not the pit behind my house. This is like the third cave system with an immediate walking distance. Like, this is literally right outside my house. And not only that, but the game naturally spawned in a walkway so we could get down here and get this stuff. How have I been playing in this game world for about four hours now without seeing something that was directly outside my door? And why did nobody tell me? Am I even playing Minecraft anymore? Am I just sitting here having an existential crisis? Actually, that second one is pretty easy. I'm playing Minecraft for the internet. Hey folks, I'm CPC Gamer. Let's hit this boring water slide and see where it takes us. I tell you what, if I had a boat, I'd be riding that down. Except not really though, because boats are really finicky in the console version of the game. But they have a habit of falling apart into their component parts when you go too fast, or turn too fast, or just because it's Monday today. I don't know. Well, there looks like there's stuff down here, so... I'm sorry to say, but the interior decoration side of this video has fallen down by the wayside, because I'm going to explore some more. Oh, and this is why I make a habit of carrying a bucket of water with me, incidentally. It serves as a portable lift. The milk is there so I can cure my poison, if and when that happens. Which I am told is a matter of when it happens, and not if. Oh, and hey, look at that! The creeper uncovered some bauxite for me. Thanks, Creeper. You're a pal. And my third bucket is for lava so I can cast Magic Missile at the darkness. Which never works. And... I'm not entirely sure why I'm limiting my inventory by carrying a useless bucket with me, but... There it is. Also, that could have gone super badly. Another reason I like to carry a bucket of water is to fix things if I get pushed into lava. It's a super cool thing, and a totally legitimate strategy when I do it, and less so when the monsters do it to me. Man, there is just junk everywhere down here. I should have come here first. This would have sorted out my problems right off the bat. Ah, well, hindsight. That's my superpower, by the way. I can predict the past with vaguely good accuracy. Also, hello, Diamond Pickaxe! I used you before, but now I'm using you permanently because I might as well. I, mean, I was talking about this a couple of episodes ago, when I was very rudely blown up mid-thought. I have never broken a diamond pickaxe through overuse. I've only ever lost them through death. And since that isn't a concern in this LP, I'm going to be absolutely fine. Disclaimer, CPC Gamer will not be absolutely fine in any sense of the phrase. Oh, 
That looked weird. EXP slowly rolling off the edge of the rock and just plonking into my character model. Looked like a tin of soup in a cupboard. Of course, I would say that. It's coming up on lunchtime. Everything I'm thinking about is food related somehow. Alright, anything this way? I think there may actually be too much stuff for me down here. It's a lot easier when there's one direction with a clear start-stop point. Like maybe one or two diversions along the way. Oh, but you look super good though. Just a set of eyes glowing and glaring at me in the darkness. I've had actual nightmares about that sort of thing. Alright, let's get back to exploring the mine. Anything this way? Ah, I guess not. Okay. So yes, exploring. We haven't gone far enough down to find, like, diamonds or anything, but it is going to be fun to see what's here. Besides, all the resources that are here, it was already worth coming down. Oh, and look at that! It's an underground canyon! That is exactly what I came in here to find. Also, when did you pop in? Like, literally pop in. You weren't there a few seconds ago. And I suppose I should feel bad for doing that. But on the other hand... Nope. Creepers are jerks. Alright. Let's go this way and see what's up. I'll get to the canyon eventually, but... It seems like a shame to walk past all this cool stuff that I already found. Also, I've been told off for digging up like that. Digging up is a good way of getting stuff dropped on your head. And that's true and all, but nothing dangerous moves particularly quickly in this game. I mean, worst case is I'll get some gravel dropped on my head, take maybe a quarter pip of damage. Well, no. The worst case is I will dig up, and the game will spawn an enemy up there, and instead of iron ore, it's actually a creeper pinata. That'd be pretty dreadful. And I guess there's nothing much over here. What's up here, I wonder? I'll find out if I don't accidentally destroy the step up that I made. Well done, Annie. Aha! Additional iron ore. I knew this was a good idea. I mean, forget the stunning look of the cavern that we're in. Let's go stare at a wall for a little bit. Well, actually, on that, one of the things that I dislike about the texture pack I'm using is that the smooth stone looks entirely flat. In the default one, and most of the others, come to think of it, it has a few little ridges and imperfections on it, and that makes it look a, a little bit more visually stimulating. But what the heck, right? We are 12 episodes in. I'm not changing this now. It'll just look confusing if I do. If I come back for round two, which I might do, I don't know, I'll change it to something else. But that is for then, and this is now, and what I'm going to do now is to empty my inventory. And while I'm picking this stuff out, check out that view. Isn't that beautiful? Like, even with the new decorative rocks, it, it just looks great. Just ignore the inventory screen that I've popped up in the middle of the screen and we'll be fine. Wait, seeds? Where did you come from? Ah, whatever. I don't need them. So as I say, we'll go into that canyon later, but for right now, we're going to keep going this way. A piece of advice that I have been given is to build a 2 by one barricade behind me so the monsters can't sneak up and ambush me. Also, that was in the wrong place. Let me sort that. But I don't think I'm going to be building a barricade, you guys. It's too time-consuming to do that in huge caverns like this one. And the monsters spawn in darkness. They will just spawn on the other side of the wall. I'm just making things more difficult for myself when I come to escape the mines, you know? And that... Yo! Check that out! I don't need the mossy stone from inside this time, but I'm still going to loot the hell out of that dungeon. Hopefully, it will go better than last time. And it is? Oh, and it did! Alright, let's see what we scored. Oh, right after this brief intermission. You can't have this stuff, zombie. It's mine. Get out of here. I found it first. Eh, that's alright, I suppose. Nothing too uncommon. Conven Ooh, a CD! And it's Cat! Man, that's the one you want. That is the best record in the game. Oh, hang on a second. Look at this! I'm learning! Put up new torches before taking down the old ones. You know, I might build a record player once I get home. Probably not, though. Like, it's a luxury item made with rare materials, and... 
Also, I turned off the soundtrack to the game, so I can't hear the music I play. I still didn't listen to Chirp, the other one I picked up. So let's just assume that it's wonderful, and everything will be okay. Did that guy just shoot my arrow out of the air? Man, the physics in this game are all kinds of crazy sometimes. Maybe that's the game's way of telling me not to explore any further this way. I should probably turn back. Jeez, what is up with the monster spawning today? You know, I have been told that the longer you stay in a particular place, then the monsters, like, more monsters will come to get you. But A, that was in reference to the PC version, and B, I don't think I need to give the monsters any kind of encouragement to come and get me. I gave them quite enough leeway to do that once I turned up the difficulty. Though with that said, I probably should think about heading back out. I have no idea where I am right about now. I've taken so many weird diversions to get here. So yes, no more diversions. Whatever's at the end of this little run is going to be the end of it. And then I'm heading back to my base. And that actually solved itself pretty quickly, I think. I'm going to grab this gold, even though it's not a particularly useful element. You can use it for mechanics, like compasses and clocks, but I've mentioned that before, that they're a very limited use in the console version of the game. Like in the PC version, where you can just go anywhere forever, yes, you're going to want some indicator of where your base is, but like, the console version is the equivalent of one biome in size. You're going to find your way home, if you build in a smart enough place. Oh man, it doesn't that look ominous. And that's the friendly route out. What must it have looked like coming in? What was that? I heard a barking sound just now. And if I changed the game audio, you would have heard it too. Hopefully. Now see, that indicates that there is a monster nearby. But I don't know any monsters that make a low barking sound like that. Not even the wolves, oddly enough. Uh, I guess there's nothing up there. Let's go back. I think it might just be the game messing with me. I mean, it has been known to do that on occasion. It will play weird ambient noises that don't really do anything beyond, you know, add ambience to the game. Suggest that there's something out there that you didn't do yet. It's got good sound design. And the soundtrack does too. Like the music that plays just while you're playing the game is really good. And it's... Like, it, the music sounds like it should be accompanied by somebody putting their hand on your shoulder and going, and you know what? That's okay. Like, take a listen to... I think it is called Mice from Venus or something like that. It is exactly what I'm talking about. Kind of sad and melancholy, but it really fits the, the mood of the game. Oh, man, it's another baby zombie! You guys are the worst. Like, actually because you have to adjust your aim to hit them, but they're really quick and constantly attacking you. They're like an even worse version of that gelatinous cube. Oh, and he just said gelatinous cube. That's the trigger phrase for talking about stupid monsters from Dungeons and & Dragons. And today, we're going to talk about the flimph, which is a dinner plate that has tentacles on it. It is every bit as brilliant and dumb as it sounds. And it's not helped along by the fact that I can't help but pronounce it in a very specific way. Flumpf. It's like the name Juarez. I don't even intend to pronounce it like that. I just kind of do. Oh man, we've been causing such a ruckus down here that security's come to throw us out. Well, that's my rebuttal to you, security man. Oh, neat. Looks like he dropped most of his armor as well. I'm not going to use it because I have the next layer up, but... That was a pretty lucky drop. Maybe not. Maybe it's just because we've turned up the difficulty. You know, bigger challenge, bigger rewards. It all levels out in the end. Oh, hang on, that's not the right way out. Oh, what do you know? I'm here already. Even more excellent. Right, let's grab our stuff and head back to the surface. And this time, let's actually do it, instead of making like a million different detours. We got some pretty good stuff on this run. Especially blundering into that dungeon. That was a very nice surprise. Oh, hang on. There we go. And a practical demonstration of why I carry a bucket of water. Z axis? What Z axis? Now, let's just hope that there aren't any monsters waiting for me on the way out. Combat in water never works out for me. 
pretty much anything in water fails to work out for me in this game. <laughs> ah, but it looks like we're safe, though. Unless the game is feeling particularly spiteful, and it wants to spawn something on the stairs on the way out. To be fair, I can't believe the game naturally spawns stairs next to my village. Like, I may have to re-roll this world in another save file to see if that's a natural thing, because that is too perfect, you know? I don't know, maybe somebody jumped in game with me at some point and I missed all the prompts. Whoa! Look at that zombie fly! I have never seen you do that before, but I'm glad I did. That was pretty funny. And you have been busy while I've been away. Nice work, man. Alright, let's head home and check out how we did. Nope, not that one. That one. First up, the obvious one. Let's get iron ore going. Oh, and of course I picked up 65 blocks, so I have to wait a bit before I can just let it process on its own. Alright, there we go. So because of the way this game was originally programmed, stacks of items can only be a maximum of 64. Kind of like how the maximum number of items in an RPG is 99. Man, look at all of this garbage that I have just held on to. <laughs> Should probably do something with that. Ah, maybe off camera. Right, music goes there. Die goes with die. Ender pearl goes on its own because I can't craft anything with it yet. And I don't need the armor anymore, so let's just file that under cactus. Yeah. How's that unbreakable enchantment working out for you? And to finish off, let's get rid of this zombie meat. I have been told that you can trade it with a cleric. And I don't have one of those in my village, so I need to make a trek across to the other one. I'm like a trading caravan! Except kind of vile. Although if you want to talk about kind of vile, why exactly would a priest need a stack of zombie flesh? That's... Like, that's some Shadow over Innsmouth nonsense going on with that. Although, right, if you wanted to be pedantic, and I do, because I always do, it's me. It's actually closer to another Lovecraft story, one of my favourites. Facts concerning the late Arthur Jeremin and his family. Go read it after this, it's like 20 minutes long, it's a pretty good read. Now then, which one of you guys is the cleric? Because you both came out of the church, so... Apparently not. Okay. Um... Well, I know that it's got to be one of you, because there is a church. So... what? Is it you? Ah. Oh. Well, don't I have egg on my face. <laughs> what an awkward ending to the episode. Oh, wait. You know what it is? I think he might have wandered off to that cobblestone settlement to the north, because I think they had a church as well. Or maybe I'm just standing here making stuff up. Is it you? Nah, of course not. Okay, oh my go. You can trade the zombie meat with the clerics, and I am supposed to have one, but for whatever reason he isn't spawning. So I'm going to head back to my main base and refuel before we end the episode. And then I'm going to go and get a sandwich. And it is going to be absolutely delicious. You guys do not even know. Incidentally, there is a really subtle little touch. You don't run as quickly on sand as you do on the other surfaces. Like, it's a really good attention to detail that absolutely didn't need to be there. But I am so glad that it is. Man, that cleric thing is really bothering me now. Like, I know it's not the biggest problem I'm going to face, but it is a problem. Ah, whatever, we'll, we'll solve it next time. Join us next time for some more of this, and until next time, goodbye! I see you, Gollum.